Murfreesboro Medical Clinic and Surgery Center is a physician-owned, multi-specialty clinic and surgery center. For 75 years, this community has trusted us to serve thousands of families every year, and Murfreesboro Medical Clinic has been committed to providing compassionate, state-of-the-art health care right here in Middle Tennessee. The Cochlear Implant Center at MMC, the first of its kind in Rutherford County, is a testament to that commitment. In October of 2020, MMC's comprehensive ENT specialists began offering cochlear implants for adult patients who suffer from significant hearing loss. The cochlear implant team at MMC is comprised of skilled ENT surgeons and audiologists who are committed to providing the highest level of care. MMC's ENT surgeons perform cochlear implant procedures in our accredited ambulatory surgery center, conveniently located downstairs at our Garrison Drive campus, and our audiologists continue your care after surgery with activation and follow-up mapping appointments here in our ENT department. With the latest technology and exceptional care, the Cochlear Implant Center at MMC is providing patients with better hearing and an improved quality of life. From consultations to post-surgical follow-ups, our Cochlear Implant Team is with you every step of the way on your journey to better hearing. Hi everyone, my name is Megan Schisler. I'm an audiologist, part of the Murfreesboro Medical Clinic Cochlear Implant Team. A cochlear implant is a surgically implanted device for patients with moderately severe to profound hearing loss who no longer benefit from their hearing aids. A cochlear implant consists of two components, an internal component and the external speech processor. The internal component is what we surgically implant inside your ear is a 90-minute outpatient surgery performed right here at Murfreesboro Medical Clinic in our surgery center. The external implant is magnetized to the internal component. That's what picks up the environmental sounds and transmits those sounds directly into your internal component. You must wear the external component in order for you to hear. To understand how a cochlear implant works, we must first talk about how we hear. Sound waves enter the outer ear and travel through a narrow passageway called the ear canal, which leads to the eardrum. The eardrum then vibrates from the incoming sound waves and sends these vibrations to three tiny bones in the middle ear. These bones are called the malleus, incus, and stapes. The bones in the middle ear amplify or increase the sound vibrations and send them to the cochlea, a small snail-shaped structure filled with fluid in the inner ear. Once the vibrations cause the fluid inside the cochlea to ripple, a traveling wave forms along the basilar membrane. Hair cells, or sensory cells sitting on top of the basilar membrane, ride the wave. Hair cells near the wide end of the snail-shaped cochlea detect higher-pitched sounds, such as an infant crying. Those closer to the center detect lower-pitched sounds, such as a large dog barking. Part of your cochlea contains very tiny hair cells. These hair cells connect with your hearing nerve. Sound traveling from your outer ear to your inner ear hits your cochlea, sparking an electrical signal that your hearing nerve carries to your brain's temporal lobe. Your temporal lobe perceives the electrical signals as sound that your brain interprets as speech, music, or other noise. Hearing aids use acoustically amplified sound, whereas cochlear implants use electrical stimulation of the auditory nerve to send signals to your brain. Stimulation type is completely different, acoustic versus electric. How do we hear with a cochlear implant? Sound is picked up by a cochlear implant microphone and processed. Headpiece transmits sound from the external processor to the internal implant. Electrical signals are then sent to the cochlea, which stimulates the auditory nerve. Signals from the auditory nerve are then sent to the brain. We will take a detailed case history of your hearing loss, your hearing aid use, medical information, and other surgeries that pertain to your ears. Your hearing aids will then be assessed and programmed appropriately for your hearing loss. It's very important to know that the hearing aids are fit appropriately to your hearing loss. After we program your hearing aids, we will then take you into our sound booth where we will do a series of sentence testing and other tests with your hearing aids on. After your evaluation, we will discuss your results and give you recommendations, whether it be a cochlear implant or new hearing aids. We will then schedule you with further appointments with our surgeon that will also include some imaging such as CT or MRI 
We will also get a record of your vaccinations. We'll then schedule you with our consumer specialist to pick out technology and talk about how this technology can help improve your life. Almost all adults who develop hearing loss later on in age do well with cochlear implants. The benefit you receive from your cochlear implant depends on several factors, such as whether your hearing loss was sudden or gradual, how long you've had hearing loss, consistent and daily use of hearing aids prior to a cochlear implant, daily use of your processor, and listening exercises after you receive your implant. Four weeks after your surgery is when we schedule your activation appointment. This is when we turn on your external processor and you begin your journey to better hearing. If you choose to be a recipient, your brain must learn how to hear and process sounds again with the new way of hearing. My patients who perform the best with their implants are committed to wearing their device daily to relearn how to hear again. It may take some time for you to hear better again. In general, it takes our patients about three to six months to reach their optimal hearing experience. My name is Dr. Brittany Kaplan. I'm an otolaryngologist and cochlear implant surgeon at Murfreesboro Medical Clinic. Cochlear implantation is a safe, routine outpatient surgery that's done in an outpatient surgery center. The surgery itself typically takes about 75 minutes or an hour and 15 minutes. It takes time to go to sleep and wake up in the operating room, plus time in the pre-op holding area and time in recovery. So in general, patients are with us about a half a day for this procedure. The surgery itself, again, is very safe. It starts by the patient being placed under general anesthesia with a breathing tube. After that, an incision is made behind the ear. This allows me to have access to the mastoid bone. The mastoid bone is the bony prominence behind the soft tissue of the ear. Before drilling, I will make a pocket behind the ear under the scalp. That's where the internal receiver stimulator portion of the cochlear implant rests. Once the pocket is made, the drilling begins. So I drill the bone, which ultimately gives me access to the middle ear space. The middle ear space is the space behind the eardrum. Once I have access to the middle ear, I will identify the round window membrane. This membrane is what separates the middle ear from the inner ear, or the cochlea. The cochlea is the hearing organ, and it is the part of the inner ear where the cochlear implant electrode is inserted. Once all the structures have been identified and the ear is prepped, we open the implant, place the receiver stimulator in the pocket under the scalp, and then a small incision is made in the round window membrane, allowing me to insert the cochlear implant electrode. Once that's complete, the incision is closed, and while I'm closing, the audiologist will run tests on the cochlear implant to make sure that the implant is functioning properly and that we are receiving appropriate signals from your hearing nerve. After the surgery, you'll leave the operating room with a dressing that looks like a cup held in place by an elastic band. That helps to protect the ear for the first 24 hours after the surgery. Once the dressing is removed, typically most patients can go back to showering like normal. The incision care is quite easy, just placing some antibiotic ointment over the incision once or twice a day for a handful of days after the surgery. The main thing after the surgery is just to rest, no strenuous activity, and allow the ear to heal. Thankfully, the risks of cochlear implantation are small. The risk of bleeding is rare. The risk of infection is also rare. Prior to surgery, we will inquire as to whether you have received the pneumococcal vaccine. In adult patients receiving cochlear implantation, the risk of meningitis is slightly higher than the average population. Getting this vaccine helps to reduce that risk. Otherwise, surgical risks include things like injury to other structures in the ear. We worry primarily about structures like the ear canal, the eardrum, or the hearing bones. Risk of injury to those structures does not happen often in this procedure. There are other structures in the middle ear and mastoid that we work around. Two of them are nerves. One nerve is called the facial nerve. That helps to control the movement of your facial muscles on that side. So it helps to control your facial expressions. During the surgery, we use a nerve monitor to allow us to keep that nerve safe. Thankfully, risk of injury to that nerve in cochlear implantation is extraordinarily rare. There is another nerve that we work around that actually controls some of the sensation of taste on that side of your tongue. Seems like an odd place for that nerve to be, but that's the way we're made. 
It's not terribly uncommon for patients to have some altered taste sensation temporarily after the surgery. It often will feel like a bitter or metallic taste on that side of the tongue. The risk of that lasting long-term thankfully is rare and it typically gets better over the first several weeks after surgery. Otherwise, risk of issues with the device itself are rare. But anytime you use a piece of hardware or equipment like a cochlear implant, there's always a theoretical risk that the device itself could fail. Lastly, some patients experience dizziness or imbalance after cochlear implantation. In general, this tends to be temporary. In patients who have pre-existing dizziness, the risk of post-operative dizziness or imbalance is slightly higher. But again, this tends to be temporary. Finally, while during cochlear implantation, we do everything we can to preserve any natural hearing you have remaining. However, it can be difficult to predict how much of that hearing will remain intact after the surgery. But once the surgery is complete, within a few weeks, you'll see both me and our audiology specialist. During that visit, I will check your incision to make sure everything is healing well. And then you move on to the exciting part. That's where the audiologist will activate your internal component and fit you with the external component of your cochlear implant. It's an exciting day because you'll begin your journey to learn how to hear in a brand new way. You will have this implant for life. That means you'll be working with your cochlear implant team to schedule appointments to make sure your device is working appropriately, your surgical site is healing appropriately, and the magnet strength is appropriate. We look forward to working with you on your journey to better hearing.